Hey everyone, Grim Chorizo here, and this is Ringside Predictions, and today I'll be giving you my Money in the Bank predictions. Now, Money in the Bank is uh, one of my favorite pay-per-views. I'm sure a lot of people can say the same thing, and WWE honestly has a pretty damn good card here. Uh, to be honest, about half of the card is super. I'm super, super into, and the other half I'm not as into, but the matches that are big and I am interested in are very good. So let's go ahead and get into my predictions. On the pre-show, it will be Apollo Crews versus Sheamus, and I do believe this is Apollo Crews' first pay-per-view match, although it is on the pre-show. I don't think he's competed on a pay-per-view since making his debut the night after WrestleMania. Now, Apollo Crews basically has done nothing since debuting until these past few weeks. They've started to give him some character, personality, and a storyline uh, with Sheamus, who has been kind of just bullying him, and Apollo Crews on Raw finally stood up for himself, and just attacked Sheamus. And now we're going to see these two go at it. Uh, you know, uh, I think Apollo Crews is definitely going to win this match. Like I said, it's his first pay-per-view match. It's his first real story. I don't see this going on very long, this feud. I think this is just to give Crews a win, and I don't think they really have anything planned for Sheamus. So my prediction is Apollo Crews defeats Sheamus. Also on the pre-show, Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. Now, this is the third time that Corbin and Ziggler have fought each other on the pre-show. So... Personally, I don't even think these two should be fighting anymore. This should have been like a one-and-done, or maybe two pay-per-views at the most. But since Corbin has arrived at, and he debuted at WrestleMania, winning the uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, he has done nothing. And I thought there was so much potential for how they could have been using him. He could have already won a title, he could have just been destroying people, he could have been in good storylines. But he's just been fighting Dolph Ziggler for like two or three months now, and it's just, it's not going anywhere. So, we've seen... You know, everything from low blows to, like, attacking from behind, there's just no real substance to this feud, and my prediction is Baron Corbin will win, and if he doesn't, I mean, where the fuck does he go? We had Ziggler win the first one, right? Then we had Corbin win, and now we have this third match. So Corbin needs to win this and go on and do something. Uh, Ziggler, I don't know what he's going to do, but Corbin... Uh, since he's the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner, he's the new guy who just debuted a few months ago. He needs to do something more than just feud with Dolph Ziggler for month after month. So, yeah, Baron Corbin gets the win. Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Natalya and Becky Lynch in a tag team match. Now, this is actually on the main card, which is good because uh, the women deserve to be on the card. So, here's my thing. Since WrestleMania, or at WrestleMania, I should say, WWE did something huge. They got rid of the Divas title, they brought in the Women's Championship, and it seemed like the Women's Division was taking the perfect turn for the best. Everything was going to be good and better, and they were going to be viewed as legit superstars, and they were going to be booked well, and it was going to be uh, all good and get what they deserve. Now, since then, I have not been interested in the Women's Division hardly at all. At first, I was like, okay, cool, Natalia's going to get her shot. Then she lost in screwy fashion. That made my interest... Uh, fall even, you know, a little more. Then at the next pay-per-view, more screwy fashion. Just shitty booking for this women's title. And then on top of that, they can't even give us good women's matches and segments and more than one a week. I swear, for the past uh, month at least, there's only been one women's match or one women's segment, and it's either been short as hell, like a two-minute uh, squash or a two-minute distraction a finish match, or it's been a shitty segment. Like, oh my god, how do you mess this up? Where the hell is Sasha? Where's Paige? I know she was on this week, but she's not in a story. Where's Summer Rae? I know, it, with Emma getting hurt, I think that really messed them up, because they had these two stories, Natalia and Charlotte, and then they had Emma and Dana versus Becky. And then Emma got hurt, and they were like, shit, what do we do? So they threw them together, and they made Charlotte and Dana together, which I don't personally really like the pairing. And then they threw Natalia and Becky together, and... Ah, I hate when they do women's tag matches like this on a pay-per-view. This is a match that could have easily happened on Raw last week. We deserve to see the women's title on the line at the pay-per-view, and they deserve to defend it on the line. I understand they're probably doing this to prolong, uh, you know, Charlotte's reign and to get to a feud later on the line. And uh, personally, I think that Natalya and Becky are going to get the win because it's a chance for them to get some revenge without Charlotte having to lose the title. Also, I think that Dana and Charlotte are going to have, you know, uh, tensions between them, and it's going to lead to Charlotte probably turning on Dana, which I think makes no sense and is really stupid, because Dana just got paired with her. And like I said, I don't even like the pairing, but if you're going to go with it, don't make it so short and stupid. Like, 
Dana is good and I like her, but she's not ready to be fighting for the women's championship, especially when you have Becky and Sasha and Paige, who really should be. So my prediction is that Natalya and Becky get the win. And from here, I honestly think we're going to get a Dana and Charlotte feud, and that doesn't really do it for me. But I'd just like that, I'd like for WWE to put some more faith in the women's division. Give us two women's matches or segments at least a week, because we're not getting that. And uh, you've got this women's title, which is great, but the women's division needs to be back, you know, it needs to be good again. Rusev versus Titus O'Neil for the United States Championship. Yes. That is right, it is going to be Rusev versus Titus fucking O'Neil for the U.S. Championship. This doesn't interest me at all. I really like Rusev. He's awesome, he's great in the ring, he's good on the mic, and he's funny, and he's, uh, I just, I like him a lot. I think he's a great U.S. champ. Titus O'Neil doesn't do anything for me as far as an in-ring competitor. Uh, a man outside of the ring, he seems like a phenomenal person, great for charities and great for the public relations and stuff, but he's not great in the ring. He doesn't deserve to be fighting for the United States Championship, especially on a pay-per-view when they could have a, a line of people that would put on a better match here. Um, but we got Titus. My prediction is Rusev retains. I like to think that this is just a one-off thing because if Titus wins, I would just be so disappointed. So disappointed. That's all I'm going to say about that. Fatal 4-Way match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. The New Day defending against Enzo and Cass versus the Vaude Villains versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. This should be pretty exciting. One fall to a finish, so the New Day could lose their titles without being pinned, and that's exactly what I think is going to happen. I think that the club, Gallows and Anderson, will win the championship here. Uh, it's, it's a shame because the Vaude Villains really, uh, I was kind of hoping they were going to win it at the last show, but they didn't. Uh, they could easily get the win here. Any of the teams could get the win. This is why it's exciting. But I think Gallows and Anderson are going to get it to solidify uh, that they are a threat and that they're a force to be reckoned with, especially since they're basically feuding with John Cena with uh, AJ Styles. So I think by giving them the titles, not necessarily that they need them, but it's going to make them look like a threat after all the shit that happened with the Usos and them just kind of losing every week. So I think that's what's going to happen. New Day will lose the titles before breaking the record for longest WWE Tag Team Championship reign, and that Gallows and Anderson will win them. Money in the Bank ladder match, it's six men. It originally was going to be seven, but they put it down to six. I think six is the perfect number for the Money in the Bank ladder match. That's how it started when the match was created in 2005, and that's how it is here today, and that's how it should be. We've got Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho versus Alberto Del Rio versus Kevin Owens versus Cesaro versus Dean Ambrose. So, in all honesty, I think this is going to be one of the best Money in the Bank ladder matches of all time, I think it's been one of the most well booked going into it. Seriously, they've they've done a phenomenal job building up all of these guys and giving us interesting and uh, entertaining segments and matches that didn't take away from what we were going to see at Money in the Bank. They fought each other a lot, they teamed up a lot, but you're still excited to see them all go, you know, free for all for that briefcase. They all seem like a threat, for the most part. Uh, there's been entertaining segments, even if they were ridiculous, like all of them standing on ladders and talking and cutting promos. That was actually really entertaining. Uh, the chemistry between these guys is great. I'm, I'm loving it. They've been doing great with all these guys since WrestleMania, and I'm really happy that they're all getting a shot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. My prediction is that Dean Ambrose will win the briefcase because the main event of the night is going to be Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. It makes perfect sense to have Ambrose get the briefcase, and then he's got that in, so we've got that shield triple threat, and we've got that feud. Uh, although Ambrose probably doesn't need it to get in there, it just, the story going on is that Ambrose could walk out the world champ, that he could win that briefcase and set up a potential rivalry between the three former shield members, and I think that that's what they're going to go with. My personal, uh, Favorite that I would like to win the match would be Kevin Owens, just because I think he would be great with the briefcase, and he could hold it for however long and eventually you know, go on and get the world title. I think it's going to be Ambrose, though, and I'm not upset about that. I think that it will be great for storytelling, and that I think that the match will be phenomenal. John Cena versus AJ Styles. A dream match, as they are calling it, and it really is. I never thought ever that we'd see these two go at it, and we're seeing them go at it here at Money in the Bank. I mean, this is a WrestleMania-worthy match, and they're doing it at Money in the Bank. They're really making this, this pay-per-view a big deal. This one is kind of hard to predict, because I know this is going to be a long feud. It'll at least go to SummerSlam and probably end there. But how do I predict who's going to get the first win? Will it be Cena, who just returned? He hasn't had really 
I don't think he's had a match since he returned. I could be completely wrong about that. But I don't think he's had a match. He hasn't had a pay-per-view match. So this is his big return. It's against AJ Styles. But AJ Styles, since debuting at the Royal Rumble, has only won one pay-per-view match, and that was at Fastlane. He lost at WrestleMania, he lost at uh, Payback, and he lost at Extreme Rules, and AJ just had a massive, huge, uh, very, very big heel turn. So AJ needs to win. But, you know, you could say Cena needs to win. He just returned. So it's very hard to predict who's going to get this win. I think they're going to go three pay-per-views, and it's going to end at SummerSlam. But this first one, I'm going to give to John Cena. Now, S Styles probably should win it. He just turned, like I was saying, and uh, it would, you know, add more fuel to this. But I think that Cena is probably going to get the win. Uh, I think it's going to be a, an amazing match, a phenomenal match, if you will. Uh, and I think Cena is going to get the win, but it's not going to be a decisive win. It's not going to be like uh, Cena was destroying AJ or anything. I think it's going to be very close, but Cena's just going to get the better of him. I think this is going to lead to something big happening, maybe so, uh, a new member of the club debuting, maybe like a Finn Balor or something not at Money in the Bank, but after Money in the Bank, which will lead up to their next match, which would be a, a battleground. Cena and AJ again, I think AJ will win there. And these predictions could change as, you know, things unfold on Raw and stuff. And then I think at SummerSlam they'll have their final match, and I'd like to think AJ would get the win there and win the feud. But I think Cena's going to get this first win, although it is very hard to predict, and I'm very excited for this match. And the main event, Roman Reigns, the world champ, versus Seth Rollins, who made his return at the last pay-per-view. So honestly, i got to be honest, the build to this match has been pretty shit. They haven't done anything. Seth Rollins returned, which was cool. Then they had Seth Rollins just kind of like run to the ring and then run back and then run to the ring and then run back. And that was their use of Roman and Seth that whole night. Then the next week they weren't even on TV and they just had these video packages. And then they had the Ambrose Asylum thing, which was kind of cool. But I understand, you know, not having the champ wrestle all the time and keeping them special, the, the main event special. But there has to be a little bit more build than just Seth Rollins turned on the shield and never lost his title. But either way, this is going to be... I would, I'm would. i excited for the match. I think it'll be good. Uh, but unfortunately, I think just Roman is going to win. I'd like to see Seth get the title back, and I think he will. But I think Roman is going to defeat Seth. I don't think it's going to be clean, per se. I think that there'll be some form of, uh, you know... Actually, who am I kidding? It's Roman Reigns. It'll be clean. So Roman will beat Seth clean. Ambrose will come out, but he won't cash in. I think he will hold the briefcase up sending a statement like, hey, I could cash in. And I think that this is going to lead to the Shield triple threat that will probably happen at SummerSlam. So I think Roman Reigns retains the World Championship here at Money in the Bank, and there is no Money in the Bank cash in. So those are my predictions for Money in the Bank. Like I said, I'm excited for it, but there's about half of the matches that I'm not super thrilled about, and they could they could surprise me. I'm not really in the Roos of Titus at all. I'm not really into the women's tag. I'm not really into uh, Corbin and Ziggler. Cruz and Sheamus could be cool, but I'm not super, super excited for it. But the rest of it, I'd say I'm pretty excited for. So thanks for watching my predictions. Let me know your predictions in the comments, whether you agree, disagree. Maybe you got some big, bold, bold predictions. Maybe there'll be a huge debut at Money in the Bank. Maybe there'll be a huge swerve. I kind of went the safe route, but I guess we're just going to have to see what happens. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.